Hey, beautiful humans. Welcome back to my cozy corner of the internet where we relax, vibe, and thrive through cozy commentary and gaming. My name is Jess, and we are continuing, finally, the Bridgerton Saga, episodes three and four today. Now, I want to just say thank you so much for all the love for the first two episodes of one and two. Um, I would also love to give special thanks and gratitude to those who dropped a comment. So if you would like to get a comment shout out, please drop your thoughts below as we explore the magical, the romantic, the sensual, yes, uh, world of Bridgerton. Um, but I just want to give a special shout out to J-Town Hollow for their comment. Hey, love this concept. I watched the show and really couldn't understand why the girlies are girling. <laughs> why the girlies were loving it. <laughs> Clap my ass off. I'm excited to see your thoughts. And listen, I agree. I agree. And I have hope. I want to have hope for the next two episodes that we're going to watch today. Um, my hope is to learn more about the Bridgertons because right now they are so unmemorable to me. But I also want more growth from them. You know, like the Duke storyline love it i'm okay with it i'm here for it i love lady Derenbury. i like the duke you know i i appreciate their characterization i feel like there was a lot more energy toward them you know versus daphne is that her name i know anthony i know lady bridgerton i know penelope way more than i know daphne and that's a problem that's your main girl that's like, that's like not knowing the final girl in a horror movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, you should already know from Jump who the final girl is going to be. Sometimes. I like a little surprise. But you can kind of guess off rip who the final girl going to be. Right now, anybody could be the final girl in this one because I don't know Daphne. So I'm. that's my hope is I want some growth. Now that Nigel's gone, eh, I even know Nigel more. I even know that raggedy dude more than I do Daphne. So I'm hoping and praying for some more character with her because right now she's giving me very Mary Sue, very Wattpad, very fanfiction.net where she is just a blank slate for everybody else to get their knocks off and that's fine. <laughs> that's totally fine. So with all that being said, uh, again, like, comment, subscribe, all the great things. Love to have you here in the cozy corner of the internets with us. And let us begin with Bridgerton episodes three and four of season one, because season two is right around the corner. Oh! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Miss Daphne! Miss Daphne, ooh, Miss, ooh, Miss Daphne. Okay, we could, we could get somewhere. I asked for more character for Daphne. If that means we're having a sexual awakening with Daphne, I'm here for it. <laughs> she out here licking cream, and so is the Duke. <coughs> Would like to lick her cream. <laughs> With Daphne here because it's not simple it's not not even now <laughs> not even today I can't even imagine oh ooh, I can't even imagine back in the day uh I'm think ah I'm thankful for whoever ancestors had to come together to make me because this is because it is a it is whoo if it is if it is dire in 2022, <laughs> if the land if the dating landscape is dire in 2022, I don't want to think about 14 1200. I don't want to think. I don't want to. Uh, nope. Thompson, the pleasure is mine. I'm sorry, Serena. Don't be so Ooh, Featherington mom is raggedy. Ooh, you know she is. Mm -mm. If she truly wanted her to have a match, she would have would have ran her up to one of these Bridgertons. They're supposed to be good friends, good Judys, 
rival Judy's, if you will. So I'm just like, if you really wanted to be on some petty shit, you would have you would have brought her over to one of them. But no, she went to the depths of petty. She went to the bowels <coughs> of petty and matched her up with some bag of bones with the skeletons that Hades be just, you know, using as his lawn chairs. I mean, just... Let's unpack this, please. I'm here. Okay, Daphne. I'm getting more. I, I called you Mary Sue in the beginning. I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting to love your character more than I am Eloise because I have to remember Eloise is supposed to be what in her teens. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to put my brain in the fact that she is of the euphoria mind where she is just frustrating. <laughs> she is frustrating. Because she's just like, Oh, I wish to nurture my mind. Oh, I wish to to do all this. There's a whole a lot of hopings and wishings. Okay. Like, if I I'm trying to to sympathize with Eloise, but it's very difficult because it's a lot of the same speech. And I know we're only in episode three, but I'm really, again, she's on, she's gonna be on my list. She's on my Bridgerton list. I need more from Eloise. Cause right now, I get it. You wanna, you wanna be a man. You wanna go to university. You wanna nurture your mind. You wanna do all these things. I get that. Then do something. <laughs> do something. Because, if my sister is literally, everybody's on her teat, everybody's on her, if everybody's on her, I can be sneakity sneak, do whatever the fuck I want, because nobody's going to be asking about me. Very much baby of the family energy. If my older siblings are wilding and acting out, what I will do is sneakity sneak and do whatever the fuck I want. That's what I want for you. And I'm hoping you realize that because if you truly did, if you are truly of the mind and of the strategy, you would be doing that right now because then mom's not going to be looking for you or checking for you. She's going to be checking over them babies. She's going to be checking over Daphne. That's it because she's go, she going to tell you to keep quiet anyway. So you might as well just go run your mouth somewhere else. You might as well go read somewhere else. And I also like Daphne's perspective because she's like, you don't know. I have troubles too. And that's also kind of like going back to the idea of like, she has to do this. Like she has to do it. She has to marry. But that's because she, she, she is of that belief system. She is prescribing to that belief because that resonates with her. Whereas other people like Sienna and like the, the, the French shop dress lady, like, they have to forge their own that way because they did not come from privilege like Daphne has. So it's a lot, again, back to that, ooh, that, what I was talking about last time, duty. Duty versus, over, versus your heart. This is what I want, and that's why I want the prince to come in as the third love, as the, as the triangle, complete the try. She has to go towards duty because she knows she'll be able to get married with the prince versus with the duke where her heart and her loins is at because girl is frustrated sexually. Whoever in the writer's room, you know what you did with that line. You know what you did with that line. You do. You do. You know what you did with that line because it's true. Let's be real. Let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it a buck 50. To this day. <laughs> to this day even. Right? People will say all types of things to get what they want. Especially in the sexual department. But at the end of the day, want to be pressed when they're like, Hey, listen, the test is coming up positive. And you want to be mad. You want to be, you want to be upset. 
you want to be upset. You could carry on with that. <laughs> I know it wasn't supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be very sensual. That line got me together. That line got me together. You can carry on with that. You you find a place, especially between your legs, and you carry on with it. You carry, keep calm, carry on with that. Auntie Danbury, uh, oh, every time she opens her mouth, it is amazing because it's, this is the reason why I'm so excited. This is what I wanted, that energy. Let Lady Danbury be the one to be the, the pawn master because right now, the Duke and Daphne are just chilling, living life, thinking that they're having a good time and all this other stuff. And building that kind of like heart-centered relationship, which is which is what I want. Lady Danbury has reminded him, Daphne got a duty. So if you don't want to fulfill yours, that's on you. That's your choice. But let her do hers. So if he starts to pump the brakes, which pushes Daphne towards the prince, creating the triangle that I wanted, that I had talked about in episodes one and two, I will be so excited. And I hope to God it happens. Or I will be so sad. <laughs> Listen, okay, listen. Let's talk about it. So, I love writers. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. What you did was a nice little analogy that I've been peeping this entire time. Heart duty. You have two men in the ring. One's the princess guy. One's the duke's guy. Blah, 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 blah. Fighting it out. Da, da, da. We're fighting over Daphne's heart. We're fighting over Daphne's favor. We're fighting over Daphne. However, what I want to add to that analogy that I really liked was Daphne stood up and says, Plan a face or Giuseppe. I, I don't know if that was his name. I'm just going to call him Giuseppe's. So Mr. Giuseppe's, right? Plan a face around Mr. Giuseppe's. That was her way of outwardly showing her favor towards the prince. Whether that was to get the Duke riled up Irregardless of that, she's lying because her heart's winning. And you know who won? Miss Mr. Monty won. The heart won. The Duke won. Right? So even though she's outwardly saying, Oh, I'm in love with the prince, blah 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 blah. Like I am in his his bag. <laughs> we all know whose bag she really about. You know what I mean? So I liked it. Let's unpack it. Let's unpack it. I like what she said. I don't have to pretend any longer. You are pretending. Because in the end, you also say, it's a beautiful necklace. I should like it. I should like it. You don't just like it. You, sh you shouldn't, just, like, if you like something, you like it. If you love something, you love it. You're forcing yourself to like it. 
you should like it very much. Meaning you should like the prince, but you love the duke. That is the ruse. That is what you are pretending now, right? Right, we are pretending now that we like the prince. The rule still continues. The rule has shifted. Because before, we thought the ruse was this whole thing between the duke and you. Eh, y'all like each other. So now the ruse is between you and the prince. But because uh, Mr. Duke said point blank period, I don't want to be with you. I'm tired. I'm leaving. Thus, you shifted the ruse onto the prince. You are forcing yourself to like him so that you can feel, fulfill your duty. And that's why she's so apologetic to her mom. It's like, even though I have met the need, I have met the, I have met what I am supposed to do. I'm sorry because I, I can't get into it in the way that we talked about in the previous episode. Like I can't get into it because even though he's a well-to-do man, Mr. Mr. Prince, he's a well-to-do. He's not the one that I, that makes you know makes some things sing. First and foremost, let me just say this, Lady Danbury, onto Danbury. Hey, Queen. Girl, you have done it again. Love your acting. Also, Duke, Mr. Simon. Because I'll be there for him. With open arms and open legs. And I'm here for it. Now let's talk about what, what they spoke about. We have uh, Lady Danbury's argument that love conquers all. And then we have Simon's argument of love changes nothing. It's just there. It's, it is the whim, you know what I mean? And obviously from Simon's perspective, he grew up in a place that was absent of love. And so for him, <clears throat> especially, right? Because if you think about it in the sense of his relationship to his father, love was supposed to change something. Love should not have allowed if, if his father truly loved and cared for him, love should have been able to save and save their relationship, to prevent him from being in this place of fear that he grew up in. He has applied that to all love. So like not only just familial love, but all love. Love does nothing. Because if, if, if a father could not truly love his son for who he was, then what does it mean for me to love somebody, somebody, make them my wife or whatever. What does that actually have to do with anything? It does nothing. So I understand his perspective and I understand Lady Danbury's perspective. She's seeing it in the sense of on a, on a bigger scale. She's using the analogy of the queen and the king who, Queen Charlotte, African descent, I'm pretty sure that's correct um, historically. And so they're using this context of love conquers all in the sense of being able to breathe new life into society, being able to show that and give opportunity on a larger scale. And I feel like too, that's why, because she cared about Simon's or the Duke's mom, she wanted to give that to Simon as well. She was of standing. And so she wanted to give that to him. Was that love not enough? for him to thus be able to give that back to somebody else. You know, so I can see it from Lady Danbury's perspective of like, the love you have experienced, has that not allowed you to become who you are right now, to even have the, the frame of thought, the freedom of movement that you probably would not have if you had continued to live under your father's roof. Had I not, taking you out of this place so that you could have more possibility to you. Like, it's just, I love their dynamic so much. And I know that this argument is like the crux of the show, but I don't even want to add, I don't even want to 
want that to be because it doesn't feel like that for me. Of like that love conquers all. It doesn't feel like that for me. I know they're trying to set that up as the argument or like the basis of this program. Um, that love will conquer all. That Simon will be turned or the Duke will be turned. That Daphne has been turned into like, you know, instead of like just focusing on duty, allowing herself to fulfill her duty through love. Like, I understand that. Same with uh, Anthony and Sienna. You know, he has he has power and position. Yet he could also, and I said this before, he could also change that and make Sienna his wife and, again, be in this love conquers all argument. However, I, I, I'm I, more of the Simon perspective that that's where we're going to sit for the most part in this entire show. Is everybody sitting in love doesn't change anything. In fact, it just complicates it. And I feel like that's just going to be, I feel like that's the argument. Love is a complication, not a conqueror. It adds, it adds, if anything, it either adds more intention and agency or, um, what is it? It allows for other people to run away and stay within their duty and their means. So it doesn't, it's not the all powerful thing that Lady Danbury is trying to bring up, but instead it's like the underlying, like it's the outlier. It's the, it's, it's like the court jester. It's like the chorus, you know, it's a, it's a part of fate. But it's not in the sense of it's going to be destined for people to be together. And if so, it's not going to be the love and fairy tale that, or this new dawn that Lady Danbury talks about. So I feel like that's more of the argument for this program. talk about that please like it is so easy for folks to be like women against women men against men mbs against mbs does not matter it is so easy for that jealousy to be you be pitted against each other but at the end of the day they make their choice the other person makes their choice you could be pressed and upset that they find either your friend or somebody else more interesting than you. And that's fine. Let that be. Let it go. I know it might hurt. You might feel away. But at the end of the day, you can't be mad. It's their choice. So that's why every, especially like every like teen or romance, it's always somebody mad and angry at the other person. But you gotta be you. You gotta keep it a hundred. It's the other person's choice. It's the person of your interest. It is their choice. So if they do not choose you, you going over there and exacting revenge against the person they're interested in ain't gonna do shit. In fact, that might even put them more off. Some people it turns them on. I don't know. Could not be me, cause that's just mess, and I don't like that in my life. So. She could be bad. She could be pressed. She could give a side eye. But hey. If that's really your good Judy, you can't be mad. You can't you can't exact revenge cuz that's it just it's the nature it's the nature of life. Okay, for folks who've been watching Euphoria season two, they also brought this up with Catherine, even though Catherine, rest in peace, your character, dust. 
But um, uh, Miss Maddie brought it up about, you know, there's one thing to think what you want and what you actually want. And that, I feel, changes over time. You learn things about yourself. You also learn things when when you connect with other people, right? Right. And in this situation, you know, Catherine, in the same way Catherine was listing all of the pros with Ethan and didn't come up with a con, the only con was that she just wasn't feeling him. That's it. Like, even though he is kind, he, he enjoys his family, he's clear about his intentions, he ain't going to ping pong you from left to right. That's not what she wants. She wants Simon. Even though I kind of want better for her in that regard. In the sense that, you know, the ping pong thing, no. It's not cute. It's not attractive. It's not. No. Make them intentions clear. If you and your feelings be in your feelings, but be upfront about your feelings. Don't be. <laughs> so that's the only thing that I'm not a fan of with Mr. Simon. And I understand this coming from a place of hurt. So, you know, my hope is for more growth with Simon. So then this match could be okay. Because right now, we're, what we're not going to do is romanticize trauma. Because <laughs> what we're not going to do, you know, is be like, oh, he's the bad boy. But that's because he's got trauma. <laughs> that trauma look real attractive. It... <laughs> It got nicely packaged and a nice light skin with money. <laughs> no. If I, you know what? I understand Anthony's perspective because listen, that wasn't a simple first kiss. <laughs> that, that first kiss was just like, because mind you, the only thing that they have done is touch tips of the fingers okay that's the only thing that they have done they have four longingly looked at each other you know he whispered into her ear about you know a little suck shun touching yourself at night while you're thinking about me like very that you know uh but for this to be the first kiss i was like wow this is they got to do more than just kiss. If Anthony didn't come in, listen, Mr. Duke probably would have laid his coat. They would have did it right till. <laughs> listen, like... He has, he has been telling you multiple times. I get it. The fantasy, he fine. Y'all have good banter for the time. In comparison probably to the prince. But he has been up front saying multiple. That's like somebody telling you, I'm just be here to fuck. And you be mad that they don't get you, that, that y'all are not in a relationship. They have been telling you that this is just for fucking. <laughs> you cannot be bad if it don't go nowhere else other than fucking. <laughs> so in this case, if she's looking at him like, you would rather die than marry me, how many times has he told you that he don't want to marry you? He don't want to marry, period. It's not even about you. He don't want to marry Cause he traumatized. He don't want to do that. He had a whole plan. You fucking up the plan. Again, love is complicated. Love is complicated shit. All right. <laughs> so I under I understand from ev right now. She's like, I don't understand. Yeah, you don't because nobody's telling you all the tea as to why he doesn't want to marry as to why. Um, what is it? All of this debacle and things. But he has been up front. He's just not. He doesn't have to give you the reason. 
If anything, he has been upfront to the extent of his own boundary. He doesn't have to give you any more than that. You, you are choosing to participate under false pretenses of your own concoction. He has told you multiple times, I will not marry you. So we could go on to be fucking and kissing up in the dark, but I will not make you my wife in the light of day. So, marry the prince. Because at least, again, his intentions is there. Up front, on the newspaper, on the marquee, on the billboard. You cannot be plucked or pressed. And that's why, what's his name? Anthony, again, that's what I was talking about. He was like, yeah, you have duped us both. You have done, befuddled us both. But I feel like it's more, you have duped Anthony. Because again, Anthony is assuming that y'all been fucking for a while. Because he knows the whole truth. Except for like the whole father situation. He at least knows you. He knows you enough for 20 years he knows you okay but with with miss uh daphne she's choosing she's choosing to omit what you have said so the only she has been duped by herself anthony has been duped by you does that make sense you, like the duke has not duped both of them <laughs> let's get that clear the the duke has duped Anthony, the Duke has duped himself, <laughs> but the Duke has not duped Daphne because he at the very least has told Daphne up front, I don't want to marry nobody. Not you, not none of these other hoes in the court, not not even the lowliest bitch in the, in the pond. I don't want to marry nobody. I don't want to give my dad the satisfaction of continuing this fuck ass line. <laughs> I just want to insert this. I don't care. I don't care about Eloise. I don't care about Penelope and Eloise. If anything, if Eloise was written out, I would like Penelope and Marina more than Eloise and Penelope. Well, here's why. Marina just brought up, we would practically be sisters. Penelope is sitting here with two older sisters that treat her like dust and a mom that treats her like dust. Not like dust in the same way that uh, Miss Featherington is treating Marina, but you know, just not giving the time of day, right? So for Marina to come in and for them to be so close, and now with the Colin thing of them liking the same guy, that is way more. I love that relationship, and I'm more invested in that than I could give a goddamn about Eloise and Penelope because I don't care about Eloise, because Eloise is such a waste of a character. The only reason Eloise is here is to unlock who Lady Whistledown is. And you really don't even need that. You don't. You honestly don't. You really don't. Lady Whistledown could live her best life and we do not even need to know who she is. If, we, if, if anybody, oof, if anybody wanted to know who Lady Whistledown was, it would be Daphne. Because Daphne's the one that is most involved and most wrote about with Lady Whistledown. It would be her. She would be the one looking into it. But she ain't got time for that. She is in rapture with two men. This is. She is in the loop, in the triangle of two men. This is. So if any, if literally, if anything, the, uh, oh, and then the other only person other than that would be the queen and maybe Lady Bridgerton. Those would be the only people who would care who the fuck Lady Whistledown is. So then with all that in mind, Eloise is a waste of a character. She has no purpose in the show. She is a waste and she makes me upset because all she does is cry on screen, rants and raves, and then walks away. And I'm so over it. I'm so over it. And this is proving to me. This scene right here is proving to me. My my upsetness, that's not a word. My upsetness 
now it is a word is the is is proven because Penelope just just said girl I don't need you and I don't care <laughs> this is all because of daddy issues hurt people hurting people over dead ass daddies over dead beat daddies fucking up these sons <laughs> No, mm -mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> she is holding it together because, and there there must be some type of love between them. Cause I would have looked at him sideways. I was like, I know you're not crying. I know you're not crying when we in debt <laughs> cause of you. And you did not have. I think for me, I think for me, if I was Mrs. Featherington, because I, you know, I don't really like her, but in this situation, if I was her, um, it would be the way that, because she has this whole idea of the lifestyle that she is supposed to be. She, this is, she carries herself as if she was the queen over all of, uh, of London, England, UK, whatever. She carries herself as if she is that, right? Even though she must be what some kind of like lord, uh, or or you know just within like, you know they're not no duke level. They're just like right here, like they're really close to the poverty line, if you will, the commoner line. Um, so the fact that like her husband has ruined that entire fantasy that this is the fantasy bursting now. This is the fantasy diluting itself dissolving if you will like i would be pressed i would be so pressed because again the fantasy is gone now it's like well we have to survive because otherwise all that shit that i would i've been throwing at other people i'm gonna be throwing that shit and picking it up off the streets soon because you did not have the four with all to talk to me and trust me, entrust yourself to me. But then again, this is back in the day when people don't talk because they use titles and all this uh, rigmarole around uh, women and men conversations that these are the reasons why we can't talk about money now, even between couples, because people be feeling away. It has nothing to do with you it has more to do with the person that you are sharing this with. Especially if you share money. If you share money and all that money gone, or if you are dependent upon money, what regardless of your situation, if you are dependent upon that, that it has to be in conversation. It has to be. Not in the sense of like how you're spending it, but at the very least, respecting how you spend it. Or respecting that if you do develop a problem, like for example, there's times when I'm depressed and my my food budget, you could tell my depression goes up depending on how much food I have invested in that week or that month. Like I would let them know, hey, I'm short because of depression <laughs> and I am sorry. Maybe we can, you know, support each other in this way so that we do not fall into further debt or anything of that nature and so that everything could be paid in full. You know what I mean? Just, I just wanted to have this a moment for open conversation around speak to people about money. Stop being in fear about money. Stop feeling shame around money because the more that you continue to feel shame and lack, the more you're going to perpetuate with yourself with your job and employment and with the people in your life that either are dependent upon money or that you enter into relationships that may involve money further down the line. Just saying.
This music. <laughs> the Duke and I are two minds. The woman was too stunned to speak. <sighs> like this forced marriage is not okay for me. And I, I I know that they care about each other, but forcing them to get together in this way doesn't do it. Doesn't it doesn't fulfill the fantasy. Because the thing is, with Daphne doing that. She continues to disregard and continues to get hurt by her own fantasy. How, oh, let's talk about that. How many times have we done that in a relationship where the person is telling us, I can't do the things that you want me to do. Let's be in a relationship. Let's get married and then be disappointed. We cannot be upset with that, nor should we allow this to i i don't like this i don't i was really with y'all within the writer's room but this is some fuck shit and i don't know if that's in the books because i know this is based off books this is some fuck shit right here again i know that her thing is compromised let's switch up the let's switch up the garden scene the garden scene is special everybody loves the garden scene we know that it's 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 iconic if you will this duel was unnecessary. I wish if Simon was about to leave, I wish that he had told her the truth in the garden. Miss Calper thinks they did something in the garden. Or Lady Whistledown is the one that learned some things. It's one or the other. Either make it a Calper situation, make her the new villain and make us think that she's Lady Whistledown or, uh, you know, or yeah, actually what I just said, make us think that Miss Cowper is Lady Whistledown. Listening in on what happened in the garden. Not, not the, the, the first kiss or anything. Simon saying, I'm sorry, I can't do this for you and here's why. Sure. It's not as dramatic, but next day it gets released. Then I would like to see how Simon is gonna do that. Is he running away? Did he lie? Like everybody would be looking at Simon sideways and then that would prove Lady Danbury's point. You're throwing all this shit away. For why? For why? Because of your dad? That you are still allowing him to have power over you in his death, in his grave. Why? You could have just spited him by saying what you said and left it alone. What well, You did not need to do this. Thus, Daphne didn't need to do this. If anything, if that was the story arc, then Daphne can have more agency on finding out who Lady Whistledown is so that Eloise is no longer a character. Because <laughs> then that would give Daphne more agency to find out who Lady Whistledown is because Lady Whistledown was the one in the garden who knew the tea about Simon because Simon was the one that told her in the garden. You see what I'm saying? That would give me, ooh, that would give, ooh. Uh, uh. Right now, this is stupid. This is, this is awful. This is saying that despite somebody saying, hey, lady, don't expect more from me. My trauma's not gonna allow me to do that here. I'm telling you where we stop. I'm telling you, they ain't no more to go. We ain't can't, we can't go no farther than this. <laughs> and she's like, we're getting married tomorrow. You ain't gonna make no blot out of me. Uh, right when I was just, right when, like literally, right when I was just, I was here for it. And he, now we're here. And now we're here. And I've been told to be surprised, like, to be surprised about episode five. So that's what we're going to watch next time. Uh, episode five and six. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts and my commentary. Please let me know yours down below. Would love to know. And then that way I can shout you out. And so we can talk about it more before we dive into episodes five and six. And then uh, I think seven and eight. I think that I think there's only, two, you know, two more of this before we get into 
season two. Hopefully they release the whole season and then that way we can just jump right into season two. But <sighs> yeah, uh, thank you again for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day wherever you are in the world and hope to cozy up with you next time. Bye. <laughs> Love it.